السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله رب العالمين all praise is indeed due to the Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى creator nourisher cherisher sustainer provider protector curer of one and all وأصلي وأسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire household and all his companions may Allah bless them all may he bless all the messengers who came from the very beginning all the way to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in order to guide mankind by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask the Almighty to bless every single one of us and to grant us all goodness and to grant us the ability to tread this beautiful path, the path of goodness, the path that will result in goodness both in this world as well as the next and to protect us from deviating onto the path that will bring regret in this world as well as the next. My beloved brothers and sisters who are here this evening, the audience online, mashallah, and those who may listen to this later on, may Allah bless you all. And may He bless the Ummah at large. Speaking about who was Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or peace be upon him, it is important for us to know that no matter how much we try, we will never be able to do justice to the greatest of creation the most noble of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one chosen by the Almighty to be the highest ranking of all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was indeed chosen and we have been blessed. We have been blessed in the greatest possible way to be from amongst those who happen to be known as the Ummah or the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is known that the messengers of aforetime have also been from amongst those whom people spoke ill of, people tried to harm, and they have harmed. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no different, where people tried to say things, people have harmed, tried to harm. But let's take a look at who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was born to Amina binti Wahab, his mother, the son he was of Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, who was from amongst those who passed away before the birth of his own child, which means in Islam, it would be correct for us to say he was born an orphan. He had no father at his birth, which means the father had already passed on Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. And his mother brought him up as an orphan. And one would think that when a child is an orphan, perhaps in our case, we might think for a moment that this child is not going to be as grand as the others, perhaps disadvantaged to a great extent and so on. But when it comes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a consolation for all those who have perhaps lost a parent or both parents that the Almighty does not determine your success on whether or not you are an orphan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us all a beautiful lesson. Similarly, as he grew older, he lost his mother. And as he grew slightly older, he lost his grandfather who looked after him. He was born in an era when it was known as al jahiliya the era of ignorance or paganism where the midst or where he was born, where he was brought up, there were some of the most ignorant people to exist at that particular time. The pagan Arabs used to worship sticks and stones. They used to maltreat their women. They used to be so upset upon the birth of a female child that they used to bury that female child alive. And they used to worship literally anything that had power, anything that signified any form of strength to the degree that Umar ibn al-Khattab, one of the uh, companions of Muhammad, peace be upon him, says that there was a time when I created an idol made of my own food. And what happened is one day I used to worship this idol and I felt hungry and I started asking for food. And when the food did not come, I ate the very idol that I worshipped. Imagine this was the period of ignorance. They had no form of respect for those who were of a different color. 
This evening, mashallah, I noticed many of my brothers and sisters from Africa as well. And each time I saw someone of a different color, I smiled because that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He taught us, لا فضل لعربي على عجمي ولا لعجمي على عربي ولا لأبيض على أسود إلا بالتقوى. There is no virtue for an Arab upon a non-Arab or a non-Arab upon an Arab or that who is or the one who is fair skinned over the one who is dark skinned except by taqwa piety whoever is pious whoever is close to allah is the one who has merit and guess what that is only known by the almighty i cannot judge you in terms of piety and you cannot judge me that is left for the almighty who has an entire day of judgment Maliki he is the owner of the day of judgment, the Almighty. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent in the midst of all these people in order to remove them from the darkness and show them the path of light. They trudded or they were walking on the path of light by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his help and his guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability to walk upon the correct path. So Muhammad, may peace be upon him as he grew up, he was free from worshipping any of these idols from a very young age. He began to question similar to the prophet Abraham before him, who happens to be one of his grandfathers. Muhammad may peace be upon him is from the family of Abraham, from the family of Abraham through his child Ismail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding of the virtue of all these noble messengers. So as he taught the, as he grew up, he was full of goodness. He was so trustworthy. He is not known for having told a single lie throughout his childhood and throughout his adulthood as well. As he grew up before prophethood, not a single lie. That was Muhammad, may peace be upon him. How many of us, we claim to be his followers, but we lie wholesale on a daily basis. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us live the true message. May we be from amongst those who are truthful, who utter the truth following the example of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. So he was known as a Sadiq, al Amin. The truthful, the trustworthy, they knew that if this man said something, that was it. They knew that he would never utter a word of lie. So one day, one day, as he was meditating in the cave of Hira, the, the archangel came to him, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, Gabriel, may peace be upon him. And the first of revelation had commenced with the terms, Iqara, and this means read. The beginning of Surah Al-Alaq, the first of revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the age of 40, subhanallah. And he says, Ma ana biqari. Imagine honesty. What honesty today, if we were illiterate in terms of computer literacy, it would be difficult for us to admit that I know nothing about this computer. You know, even if we have a mobile phone, we would pretend for a moment that we know everything about it. We would be shy to acknowledge that we don't know something. With Muhammad, peace be upon him, something as simple as reading. Read, he was told. He says, Ma ana biqari. I'm not a reader. I don't read. Read again. Ma ana biqari. Then the verses were revealed. After the third time, اِقْرَأْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقَ اِقْرَأْ وَرَبُّكَ الْأَكْرَمَ الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمَ عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ Read in the name of the Almighty who has created. In the name of your Rabb, your Lord who has created, created you from a clot, subhanallah. Created mankind from a clot. This is something amazing. There were secrets being revealed of the Almighty and His creation to a man unlettered in the middle of the desert. And mankind was favored upon. Allah has done a favor to entire mankind, to those who believe the greatest favor. Listen to what Allah says. الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا. Allah has indeed favored the believers by sending, or when He sent a messenger from amongst them to them. سبحان الله. It was a great favor, teaching them goodness, teaching them the wisdom, and purifying them. The purity came in the form of 
purity of worship, purity of social behavior. So much Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought the great messenger, the final of all messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was one who came to the people and reminded them of all forms of goodness. Yet at that time, initially, there were some who found fault. They called him a magician. What did he do? Did he fight back? Did he call them a bigger name or did he make a bigger accusation? No, he was silent. He was quiet. He kept on calling. He was focused. He knew he always had a smile. And he says to smile is an act of charity. How many of us can smile in our own homes and we claim to be followers of this beautiful messenger? How many of us can smile in the face of one another? How many of us can show our teeth? Or do we complain? that we still need the braces to straighten them before we smile. May Allah bless us all. May He grant us goodness. He was the man who taught us to forgive, forgiveness. He had forgiven so many who harmed him. There was a lady who con constantly threw some dirt on him as he passed the gullies of Mecca to Mukarrama. And what did he do? Amazingly, he ignored it because he knew she's an elderly lady and this is the time to ignore. Let me ignore it. One day when that did not come in his direction, he decided to find out what exactly happened to the woman. And when he entered her home after seeking permission, he asked her, what is wrong? And she was shocked. The same man whom I constantly insult. And this insulting was not just by mere utterance of words. It was not by drawing cartoons. It was actually by throwing literally defecation on a man astaghfirullah something as dirty as could be throwing it on a man who's the most noble of all the creatures of the almighty the highest of all creation the most noble of all the messengers but look at his reaction he kept it he kept praying for this woman and one day when the opportunity arose what did he do he seized it by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such that she had to utter that if this is the case you are actually coming to inquire about my health and the way you found out that i was unhealthy is because the evil that comes from me on a regular basis in your direction did not come today then i definitely bear witness that you are the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amazing how many of us are quick to jump when someone insults us without going back to looking at how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself dealt with it. He prayed for them. He continued. He constantly made sure that he delivered the message as best as he could. This was Muhammad. This was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace be upon him. And may we be truly from amongst his followers, those who learn the lesson. So as he delivered the message, Subhanallah, one of the first things he did was to ensure that the message was delivered to worship the maker alone. And he was the one who came up with the verses from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cut out the idol worshipping, to cut out worshipping one another, to stop worshipping sticks and stones, to stop worshipping the dead and those who were in their graves. That was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the one. He says, you have a direct link with your maker, so you worship your maker alone. He says, لَا تُطْرُونِي كَمَا أَطْرَةِ النَّصَارَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ Do not go beyond the limits in worshipping me, meaning do not worship me, do not push me higher than my status given by Allah in the same way that the Christians have done to Jesus by raising him almost to Godhood and beyond. Don't do that. Keep on calling me Abdullahi wa Rasuluhu, the slave of Allah and his messenger. He made it clear that he was only a messenger who delivered the message and worship or acts of worship were never to be rendered to him, but only to be rendered to the, the maker alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who made you and I is the only one who is owed worship. He is the only one worthy of worship. This is why the statement, the declaration of faith taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, the one who made me alone. No one besides my maker is worthy of a single act of worship. And I bear witness that Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was so humble, amazing. He is the one who made it very clear from the beginning that a woman should be treated with utmost respect 
to be upset at the fact that you have a daughter instead of a son is already a sin and it is part of the pagan belief. And when the female child who was buried will be asked, meaning justice will be served for her as well, when the female baby will be asked, why were you buried alive? And those who buried her alive will be brought to the book on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us respect every one male or female. Ameen. So he was the one who said, Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi. The best from amongst you is he who is best to his wife, his spouse, or family members. How many of us can comfortably say that we are the best to our family members? Many of us claim to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but in the home we have a disaster because we could not be bothered to have a beautiful word come out of our mouth. We could not be bothered to perhaps have a beautiful expression on our faces, yet it is an act of worship to smile at the face of anyone. What about if that is your own family? Amazing. How many of us have time for our family members? How many of us are the best and our family members would be able to stand up and say, this person is indeed the best to his family. May Allah grant us the opportunity to learn from Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He even says, خيركم, خيركم He goes on to challenge the people. I am the best to my family from all of you. So if you'd like to learn something, go and learn from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The romance that he had, subhanallah, that was made clear to us between him and his spouses. Amazing. Something that sometimes people who are religious, sometimes think that this is a topic we should not be addressing. No way. It is something we need to rekindle in our lives. Many of us would feel shy to even walk down the aisle with our own spouses. Yet it is an act of goodness. What is wrong with that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may he grant us the lesson. This was Muhammad, may peace be upon him. When a woman was bought and sold, do you know what he did? He came up with that legislation from the Almighty which stated that not only is it prohibited to buy and sell a female, but on top of that, when someone passes away in terms of her own family members, she will be entitled to a share even though she may not need the wealth. Because he is the one who said, every female shall be looked after by her closest male relative. Something amazing, something unique. And this is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if she does not need the wealth, she will be acknowledged, number one. Number two, she will get a portion that will be exclusive for her. Yet the males who are related to the deceased in the same way will have a portion that will not be exclusively for them. In fact, the same female will have another share from the share of those closest male relatives in terms of being looked after by that wealth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. Then come people who find fault in what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought. Whereas he brought for us the solution. He is the one who made us conscious of the fact that this life is not the only life. There is a life after death that we need to prepare for. So live the best possible way here and automatically you will have the best possible life after death. Life is not just the only thing that we have as believers, we understand that life is short. This life is very short. It has a few years, a few decades. As he says, The average age or the span, the lifespan of the members of my ummah between 60 and 70 years. And that's it, subhanAllah. Thereafter, there will be eternity. So prepare for that eternity in a beautiful way. This is Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He constantly reminded us that when you go through difficulty, be patient, be patient. That patience will deliver you from evil in the hereafter. That patience will come to your rescue in the hereafter. This is Muhammad, may peace be upon him. The greatest of all, he was the one who gave us so much comfort. He went through difficulty, not because he deserved it, but because he was an example for us all to follow when we have our own difficulty. لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا. Indeed, Allah has favored the believers when He sent for them from amongst themselves a messenger. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. 
لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر. Indeed, in the life of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, in the existence of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, there is a beautiful example for those who are looking forward to the meeting with Allah سبحانه وتعالى. A lovely example to emulate and to follow. If you have anything in life, the one of the best things you could do, difficulty in life, pick up the book and read the biography of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Look at the difficulties he went through. They will eclipse any difficulty you and I have gone through or are going through. Subhanallah. This was Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He was very patient. He continued praying to the Almighty. He never lost hope. With us, we have a little issue, small matters, and we lose hope in a few minutes, in a few days. When we call out to the Almighty, we want a response almost immediately. When it comes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reminded us that every one of you is going to be tested. He read the verses. Do people think that it is enough for them to say we are believers and then they won't be tested? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says quite clearly that we have tested those before you as well in order, in order to distinguish those who believe truly and those who are false in their belief. So from this we learn that the Almighty is going to test every one of us. Where did we learn this from? It is revelation brought to us by the same man, Muhammad, may peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a powerful person. He is the one who taught us to do business in an upright manner. You should make sure that you are happy with the deal and you are clear with the deal. He is the one who made it clear to us that the business that we engage in should be fair. We should not be unfair. We should abstain from usury and interest because it makes the rich richer and the poor poorer. It is unfair to the poor and this is the one of the reasons why usury and interest is prohibited it was muhammad may peace be upon him who made it clear that anyone who cheats anyone else cannot be a follower of muhammad may peace be upon him whoever cheats us is not from amongst us he cannot claim to be a follower of muhammad may peace be upon him he was the one who taught us not to insult those who follow other faiths no matter how silly something might seem to us no do not insult those who follow other faiths because it will result in a counter insult because of the, the deed. May Allah protect us all. Listen to the verse. <laughs> Do not insult, insult those, those who are calling out to gods besides Allah. Don't mock at them. Don't jeer at them because they may do the same to Allah without knowledge. They won't know you would have caused it. So this is why a Muslim will never draw a cartoon. How many of us know of a single Muslim who has drawn a cartoon in order to insult anyone belonging to another faith and their values or their faith? Not one cartoon, subhanAllah. But we will be victims of it in order to test us. What do we do as a result? Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. I never ever have come across a Muslim who has mocked at the faith of someone else and made a cartoon of it. Impossible because that is Muhammad. He taught us not to do that. Subhanallah. This is why even if someone had to depict Jesus, may peace be upon him, Moses, may peace be upon him, or any one of the other messengers, we were taught that they are the brothers of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. They have all come with the correct message. He was the one who came to complete the message and to confirm what they had come with. And this is why you have the Ten Commandments which are confirmed even in Islam. Subhanallah. Something amazing, although one might argue that no, that was brought by Moses, may peace be upon him. We acknowledge 
we admit, we believe, and we follow. We have to respect every single messenger by saying, may peace be upon him after the name of all of them. Even though we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the final messenger who may not have been accepted by some, we will continue to respect those whom they follow or claim to follow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to moisten our tongues by the utterance of a prayer. May peace be upon him whenever the beautiful names of any one of the messengers is called. This was Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He taught us not to insult others. He taught us not to create confusion, not to harm people. He taught us not to create disaster. He taught us not to harm insects, let alone human beings. He taught us not to burn with fire anything living. That was Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He taught us not to burn the insects with fire. Imagine what the case is regarding human beings. May the Almighty grant us goodness. We claim to be the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But sometimes our actions are far away from the deen. And sometimes this is why those around us who may not be from amongst the ummah happen to look at us with the wrong eye. They look at us with a little bit of animosity. They don't understand because we are the ones who have not been the true ambassadors. So in honoring the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I call on yourselves and myself to try and live by the word everything Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. If you take a look at the honor and the dignity given to a female, she was a sex slave in the time of ignorance, the period of jahiliya, the period of paganism. A woman was a sex slave being thrown from pillar to post, from man to another, and so on. What did he do? He came in and stopped that, and he ensured that she would be granted her dignity. She would not be compelled to undress. She would be from amongst those who dresses in such an appropriate manner that her body will not be that which will determine who she is but rather her heart is what will determine who she is may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our women yet today sometimes we've been enslaved once again by being encouraged to remove our clothing to show our bodies once again going back to that initial period of ignorance and yet we think that we are being liberated by doing that it was muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who came to us to tell us when you cover yourself you will be valued for exactly who you are if you would like to uncover yourself you would learn the hard way that people will probably gauge you and judge you based on the shape you have which will definitely one day perhaps leave you May Allah bless us. May He grant us strength. May He make us from amongst those who dress modestly, both the males as well as the females. And this modesty is actually the respect that we would achieve by following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People would actually look at you and they would understand this is not a toy. This is not a sex object. This is not something that I should just look at and just, you know, uh, make cheap. Not at all. The most valuable asset that we ever have, according to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the opposite gender. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. May He open our doors. The children we have, we should be pleased. He says, if you have had three daughters, and you know sometimes we have one daughter, then we have another daughter, then we have a third daughter, and the, some of the minimum feelings that the devil makes us feel is that, you know what? How could I have had three daughters? I'm upset. I now need a son. The Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, says, those who are patient or those who are happy upon the decree of the Almighty, those who have looked after their daughters, two, three or more, and they have brought them up and grant, given them a, a decent upbringing, tried to get them married to decent homes, they will be granted paradise in return. It was Muhammad, may peace be upon him, who gave value to the mother, who said, when a man came to him saying that I would like to participate with you in the sacrifice, he says, is your mother alive? Yes, she is. Well, get to her feet for indeed there you will find paradise. Those were his words, the value of a woman. He is the one who came and recited verses to us. <laughs> Don't show even a small 
expression on your face that displays anger towards your parents. Be kind to them, be good to them, have mercy on them, pray for them because they looked after you when you were young. This was Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Although he was an orphan and he lost his mother at a very early age, here he comes and give us advice how exactly to live with parents, divine that which came from the Almighty. How many of us are bad to our parents? How many of us have ugly words to utter to our mothers? How dare we call ourselves followers of this great messenger, Muhammad, may peace be upon him, when our mouths are full of bad words against our own parents? We need to understand, yes, when a parent instructs you to do something bad, evil, unacceptable, you must excuse yourself respectfully. That too is a duty that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained. Something beautiful, do you know what he says? He read verses of the Quran and something amazing. If your parents try to ask you to do something in association of partnership with Allah, that which is wrong, that which is incorrect, that which is unacceptable, then you will not follow that. But you will continue living with them in kindness and goodness and continue being good to them. So kindness is one thing and obedience is another. Obedience is a duty when it comes to parents. According to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they have instructed us to do something that is not wrong, but we should, we will not be able to obey them when they've instructed us to do something bad, to do something evil. That does not mean we will not be kind to them, that we will not respect them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. It is indeed a test. This is Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He is the one who told us, he instructed us how to treat our workers. He told us not to burden those who work for us with something that we wouldn't be able to do ourselves. Amazing. Ikhwanukum khawalukum ja'alahum allahu tahta aydikum fa man kana akhuhu tahta yadihi fal yut'imhu mimma ya'kul wal yulbishu mimma yalbas wa la tukallifuhum ma yughlibuhum fa in kallaftumuhum fa a'inuhum. These people who work for you, they are your brethren. Allah has placed them under your authority. If you are to ask them to do something, do not ask them to do something that will be too difficult for them. And if you do, then help them do it. Clothe them with the clothing you wear. Feed them with the food that you eat. They are human beings. How many of us understand this when it comes to those who work for us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be the true followers of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Amazing how Muhammad, may peace be upon him, admonished one of his closest companions when he uttered a statement regarding Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu, a black man, and he says, O oh, son of a black man, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately admonished him, how dare, how dare you utter such words, how dare you utter such hurtful, racist words, unacceptable, you will not be allowed to say this. It was made quite clear. In fact, when he went up to the heavens to see in an incident known as Al-Isra wal miraj the ascension to the heavens, when he came back, he looked for Bilal ibn Rabah, who was a companion from Africa, a dark com in complexion. He says, oh Bilal, I heard your footsteps in heaven. Amazing, imagine what the others must have thought. It did not stop him from uttering that, even though Bilal ibn Rabah was dark in complexion. Some of the best hearts, some of the best hearts are found in the chests of those or in the bosoms of those who are dark in complexion as we have learned from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this was the man, this was his message, a message of goodness, a message of kindness. Be kind even to your enemy. He was the one who brought to us acts of worship that prove that no matter who you are and what wealth you have and what standing you have in this world, you are equal. When you enter the house of the Almighty and you want to pray, you stand in one line. Nobody can say that I have more, so I will stand a step ahead of everyone else. Nobody can say this man is a worker of mine, so let him stand at the back. No, in the house of Allah, everyone is welcome. And every single person, no matter what, what uh, no matter what post or position you hold or what social standing you have or what wealth you have, you will stand in the same line and you have the same access to your maker. The same applies when going for the pilgrimage, when going for the Hajj. Everyone, no matter who you are on earth, 
you will all have the same access to the Almighty, be dressed in the same clothing, you will have to do the same things, and you will all have to be declaring the greatness of the Almighty. Subhanallah. We are brothers and sisters in faith, and the rest of us are brothers and sisters in humanity. This was taught to us by Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He has taught us kindness to animals. He was the man who has informed us of the entry into heaven of someone who helped a dog, who quenched the thirst of a dog. And he says this person will be granted entry into heaven by the Almighty because of such a deed. Imagine his kindness to a dog that is considered an animal. A dog that is considered an animal. We are Amazing how kindness to such a dog would bring about entry into heaven. What about kindness to our fellow human beings? Subhanallah. This is Muhammad, may peace be upon him. What a great man. It was Muhammad, may peace be upon him, who taught us that to save a life would be equivalent to saving entire humanity. He is the one who read the verse for us. He is the one who said to take the life away unjustly of even a single soul would be as though you have destroyed entire humanity. He is the one who served justice when someone came to him and told him that you know what? There is a certain very noble person who's committed a crime. He says I, when crime is committed, no matter how noble they are, they will be treated exactly like everyone else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. He is the one who brought about the goodness that we have. Aren't we so fortunate to be following such a blessed and noble messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We need to understand the darkness that they were in and the light that was brought almost instantly. Today, you and I brag about a few followers we might have on Twitter and Facebook. Yet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has perhaps 2 billion followers today across the globe. No Twitter, no Facebook, no loud hailer. Nothing at all. More than 2 billion people follow that example. They utter, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides my maker who made me. Him alone is the one worthy of worship. And I bear witness that Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is the messenger, the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where did all these followers come? Where did they come from? Amazing. The non-Muslims bear witness that he was a man. He was a man who brought about justice in an era where it was full of injustice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Today the deen, the religion has been hijacked by people who misinterpret it, by people who've lost the plot basically, by people who have insulted Muhammad, may peace be upon him in a far greater way than those who have drawn caricatures, those who have drawn the Cartoons, may Allah guide us all and may He guide them to the good path, to the path of goodness and the straight path. Ameen. Let us understand sometimes our behavior and the way we carry ourselves in life is more insulting to Islam than anything the non Muslims may have done. Let's admit that sometimes the way we speak to our colleagues, to our family members, the way we carry ourselves. The amount of cheating we do, the, the vulgar words that come out of our mouths, the lying that we engage in, the falsehood that we engage in, is actually a huge insult to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One hand, we claim to be his follower, and the other hand, we are far away from his teaching. What kind of following is that? May the Almighty grant us all goodness. My brothers and sisters, he was a man whom, when the people mocked at him, he prayed for them. When they harmed him, he prayed for them. The result of those prayers, the prayers perhaps for years on end, such that the day he achieved the victory of Mecca, when the bulk had entered Islam, do you know what he says? He spoke to a people who had harmed him, who had harmed his own followers, who had killed some of them, who had usurped their wealth, who had taken away so much. And he asks them quite a simple question. Ya ma'ashara Quraysh, madha tadunnuna anni fa'ilun bikum? O people of Quraysh. And before we continue, let's explain what they did. The people of Quraysh had killed some of the Muslims. They had usurped the wealth. They had stolen the land of the Muslimin. They had driven them out of their homes. They had prepared armies in order to fight the Muslimin. And here comes a day when Muhammad, may peace be upon him, with a hundred thousand odd companions of his, Makkah to Mukarrama. He is coming to Makkah to Mukarrama. Amazingly, he 
the people of Mecca, who were the very ones who had harmed him, are being asked a question, O oh people of Quraysh, what do you think I'm going to do to you on this day? Imagine what must have gone through the minds of the weak ones from amongst them. They must have thought this man is going to pillage, this man is going to destroy, this man is going to court martial us, this man is perhaps going to execute all of us. What do you think I'm going to do to you today? And they had nothing to say besides, we wish for goodness, you are a good man and you're a noble man. You know what he says? I will tell you what the Prophet Joseph told his brothers. Go, for indeed there is no retribution today. You are free, you are completely free to go. At that juncture, most of those who were not Muslim yet, they had declared their faith. This is the man. We were told so much evil about him. We were told that they eat the flesh of humans. We were told that these are the barbaric people of the world. We were told that this man is really a monster. And look at him, he's forgiving us wholesale. We bear witness that this is the messenger. He is the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa Amazing. This was Muhammad. This is the man we follow. We are proud of following. No matter what we say, we will never be able to do justice to such a great man. We will follow as best as we can. And we hope goodness that in the life after we will get to meet him. We were not companions of his in this life, but perhaps in the hereafter. May Allah grant us companionship of his. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, what a great man. He was the man whom, subhanallah, when he went to Ta'if, he had lost his spouse, he had lost his uncle, Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha. She was the wife of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. She was a pillar of support the day when revelation came to him and he went to her, telling her, this is what happened to me. She says, Kalla wallahi la yukhzikallahu abada. Nay, by Allah, He will never ever let you down. Allah will never disgrace you. Nothing bad can happen to you. Do you know why? Because you are the one who fulfills the rights of the neighbor. You are a kind man. You are just. You are upright. You have uh, done good as much as you can. How can Allah let you down? Imagine this was just before prophethood. Just at the point of prophethood. A declaration by his own wife claiming how noble the man was. Yet when he lost Khadija, when he lost this blessed wife of his, may Allah's peace and blessings and mercy be upon them all. It was known as the year of sadness. He had gone to Ta'if to deliver the message, thinking that the sadness that perhaps has engulfed me, perhaps I will get some goodness by delivering the message of goodness to the people of Ta'if. And when he went there, do you know what they did? They pelted him. They sent their children to run after him, to chase him out of Ta'if, literally as though he was an animal. Astaghfirullah, the greatest insult to Muhammad, may peace be upon him, inflicted physically upon his own blessed body, may peace be upon him. And what did he do as he is going out of Ta'if? The angels, the angels responsible for the mountains come to him and say, Oh Muhammad, we have been instructed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we've been instructed that upon your instruction, we will bring together the two mountains and destroy all these people who have harmed you, who have thrown stones at you, who have ridiculed you, who have mocked at you, who have chased you out of this place of five. And do you know what he says? At that juncture, he decides to complain to Allah. He decides to complain to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He says, Oh Allah, I complain to you. Regarding what? Is it regarding these people? No. I complain to you regarding my own weakness. Allahumma inni ashku ilayka wa quwwati wa qillata hilati. Oh Allah, I complain to you. I am weak, Ya Allah, my own weakness. I am complaining to you regarding the weakness that I am in. SubhanAllah. Allah placed on His shoulders the duty of delivering the message. And He is saying, I've delivered the message, but look at these people. They are not prepared to accept it. Amazing. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the angels who were instructing him to issue a small command. He says, no, if these people do not believe, perhaps from their children will come those who believe. Look at the foresightedness. Look at Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He did not live for the day, but he lived for the future. To this day, his sunnah, his teachings, his preachings, his example is emulated to the letter throughout the globe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. 
May he make us from those who follow this beautiful example. He prayed for the people of Ta'if. As a result, a few years down the line, they all, or the bulk of them, accepted Islam. Today you go to Ta'if, it's totally Muslim. It was not spread by the sword. It was spread by the kindness, the good words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who say that Islam was spread by the sword are unaware of his or they are full of jealousy or hatred or ignorance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance. If you take a look at this moment today, we have people who are turning to Islam at a time when it is not easy to be a Muslim. When the globe has the wrong picture of Islam and there are people whose hearts are straightened towards the straight path. There are people who see the goodness of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. They understand that happiness comes through following that example that he has brought to following the teachings and the guidance that he has come with, no matter what. He was Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Take a look at what he does. A lady whom he offered to help to carry her belongings to her home happens to swear the man, not knowing that this is the man, she says, you know, my son, you are such a good man. You are such a kind man. But there is another man here in Mecca known as Muhammad. He is a bad man. He is a magician. He is after wealth. He is after power. He is after women. He is after whatever else she might have said. And she made mention of so many points. And yet she says, stay away from him. He's a magician. He's a bad man. He's sworn our forefathers. He has said that the idols that are being worshipped are wrong and so on. And he remained silent. Once again, he taught us that sometimes you have to remain silent. Wait for the opportunity, subhanAllah. When he got to her home and delivered her goods and he was about to leave, a simple question, a simple question she asked, my son, who are you? What a blessed man. The son of whom are you? What, a, what an honored father you have. And he says, you know, my dear mother, the man whom you spoke evil of from the minute I carried your belongings to this minute here is the same Muhammad, may peace be upon him, whom I am. Immediately she had tears in her eyes and she said, if that is the case, then definitely, if that is the case, then definitely you are a messenger. Definitely I bear witness that your message is correct. You are the man, the messenger, and I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the declaration of faith through good character, through upright business dealings, through that which was the best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. We have only but mentioned to you a glimpse of the beautiful life of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He was the one whom, when a person had engaged in something wrong or committed a sin, he came up with legislation that in order to achieve forgiveness, you have to free a slave. Imagine, slavery was rampant at the time. People were so proud of how many slaves they had. Islam came to abolish that. In what way? By encouraging people to free slaves. In fact, by saying that if you have a slave and you've committed a sin, you will not achieve forgiveness of that sin until and unless two things happen. One is you need to free the slave. And number two is you then need to ask the Almighty's forgiveness for that sin. And this is mentioned in the Quran. A person who makes an oath and breaks the oath was instructed quite clearly to free a slave. Amazing. So the slaves were freed one after the other. So much virtue was given to those who free slaves. And yet people say Islam came with slavery. Not at all. Islam actually brought down the shackles of slavery in so many beautiful ways. But people find it in the best of their interest sometimes to utter that which is wrong, to con people, to utter that which is incorrect, to look at the few miscreants from amongst us. May Allah protect us all. To look at those who use Islam for a political agenda, perhaps, for some of their own purposes. To look at those who have used Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, as, as a name in order to perpetrate their injustice, in order to do that which is unacceptable. Nay, we refuse. We understand very clearly that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the man of peace, he brought about peace, he brought about goodness. He is the one who taught us to be at peace with the entire environment. It's wrong for me to break a tree. It's wrong for me to burn the grass un without a reason. It's wrong for me to cut down and chop a tree. And in fact, it is so blessed for me to plant a tree that would perhaps provide shade and fruit 
to any human being, even to an animal. This is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are supposed to be full of peace, stretching out the arm of peace to all those living on earth, to anything that is living. They should feel at peace when they see us. They should not feel frightened. They should be from amongst those whom, if they had to see us, they would see a living example of beauty and peace. A living example of contentment and goodness, my beloved brothers and sisters. As I end this short talk, I'd like to make mention, may Allah forgive me for not having done justice even to the smallest degree, to the greatest of all those who ever lived. Muhammad may peace be upon him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all honor the messenger by following his example, by emulating, by reaching out to others, by being those who can be the greatest asset to humanity at large, Muslim as well as non-Muslim, to all the creatures of the Almighty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May he grant you all every form of goodness. May he protect you all from every form of illness. In fact, it was Muhammad, may peace be upon him, who taught us to have a concern for those who are sick and ill, no matter who they are. To show concern for those who have suffered loss. It is prohibited for us to become happy at the loss of another. And it is prohibited for us to show that we are celebrating upon the loss of someone else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all cure from our sickness. And may he grant us all paradise. Until we meet, inshallah, there. With Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahi bihamdih subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natu